one of the things why people drive so much is after work. People need to go to the grocery store, to the fitness center, to the child care center. If those activities are just scattered throughout the, the landscape, people have to have a car to zigzag to connect these places up. So you put them around the train station, it's kind of one-stop shopping. You consolidate those activities at that one point. So I think the best transit-oriented developments are more than just sort of j jumping on points and of getting on the train or off the train. They really are focal points to really re-energize and organize places in distress or stagnant urban districts. One of the best features of, of TODs, and I think of Scandinavian cities like Stockholm, is um, what they'll always have is a great civic space right outside of the station because functionally and symbolically that does become the hub of the communities where farmers markets are held, uh, community concerts, public demonstrations, public celebrations. So the transit hub really becomes a community gathering point and uh, it's the place to connect to the rest of the region. But rimming those civic spaces are the grocery stores, are the uh, fitness centers, are the delis, are the outdoor uh, cafes and eateries. So those design elements are, I think, really core to successful TOD. I would point out a place that I think many people recognize is successful for a bus-based system is Curitiba, Brazil. And, and I would say the reason why Curitiba is successful, um, the, the nature of the bus is that uh, you tend to get more linear patterns of development because a bus generally stops more frequently. Uh, you get less station, uh, shorter station spacing, so you get less nodes and more continuous ribbons. But one of the things they've done quite successfully there is they've intermixed activities up and down the corridor. So people live, work, shop, hotels, restaurants, up and down. And what that means is the buses are full in both directions. Origins and destinations are scattered up and down the corridors and people are moving in both directions. So I think uh, just efficient use of the infrastructure. Busways are very expensive. You don't want buses full in one direction and empty in the other. Mixed land use corridors, I think, has been a, a real key success in, in, in their case. What the public sector can do is prime the pump. You know, it, um, the private sector will build buildings around transit stations, but to really get that accelerated, people want amenities. They want good streetscapes. They want walkability. So the armature around the stations, uh, public squares, uh, libraries, uh, just good urban art, that's going to be the sort of thing that brings uh, these choice consumers into these neighborhoods and really build that kind of momentum where you get a virtuous cycle. Uh, just more market demand with priming the pump in the public sector just really creates that synergy where it just goes on its own momentum. Once that happens, developers, if anything, they know it's the smell of money. If others are making good profits in these locations, they'll start doing it in many other locations. Cities also realize that's going to expand the tax base because more investments coming in their neighborhood, they'll continue this. So I, I think you just literally create that kind of momentum where eventually it just sustains on its own energy.